Hello, welcome back to Lee's Lab. Uh, back in the inner sanctum because the basement is still freezing. But I have something really interesting to show you now. Uh, I've been looking at the uh, Harvard Engineering Magnode uh, for the past few videos, especially the, the antenna system on it and how the antenna is built. And we've been testing the coverage and the radiation pattern of the antenna. Uh, what I really wanted to do though is to show you the magnode actually working and turning lights on and off which is what it is meant to do. Unfortunately the magnode that I purchased which I've been looking at uh, was slightly broken when I took it to bits to get the antenna off and that's because as we saw in the other videos it's covered in this conformal coating and what the coating does is it coats the whole thing inside and stops water getting into it. Uh, unfortunately, when I took it to bits, uh, there are actually three circuit boards in the device. When I prise the circuit boards off very, very carefully, um, because all the coating was on there, it, uh, it, it wouldn't come off properly. These are meant to be connectors, they just stuck. And I pulled all the tracks off a PCB and it was just, it was ruined. Um, so good for the antenna, that wasn't affected, but the circuit boards, uh, they were destroyed, uh, which is a bit of a shame. Fortunately, these are $8.99 on eBay, and so I got another one. But what's really cool is I managed to find one of these uh, on eBay, about £20. This is a WiMAC on-site tester, and this is the device that the engineers will use when they install these on the lamp posts, just to make sure that it's working and that they be installed it properly. Uh, I haven't tried this yet, I've read the manual so I know what we need to do, uh, but this is the first time we, uh, I'm going to try this and actually hopefully see this thing working and doing something. So what we're going to do is we're going to use it to turn on and off this uh, LED light here, it's about a 5 watt light. Uh, I have a cable coming here, this is a main supply which I just plugged in. And all we need to do is to connect this to uh, the neutral here. The, it's, it's, yeah, it's unplugged, that's good. I want to get to a surprise. And the live in here, and uh, that's it. So there's three wires that connect to the magnode here, and I'll show you on this PCB. This is the PCB from inside here, uh, the one I broke. And this is the power control board. What we have here, this is the, the live and neutral power supply to the whole thing. And um, what I'll do is I'll do another video in um, maybe in a couple of days time. And we'll actually, we'll tear this down properly and we'll reverse engineer the whole thing. Which would be really good because then you can see exactly what's inside and we'll look at all the chips and what they do, etc. But what we have, the live and neutral come in. Uh, the live goes via a little shunt here. Uh, with that shunt there, they can measure the power that the lamp's using. So that's really good because it means if a light should be on, but it's, it's using no power, it's faulty and they can detect that and they can send people out to have it replaced. Um, the light comes in here, it comes around here and it goes via this SCR and this relay here. And the switched output comes out of the relay um, across the track here and into this red cable which we have connected up to our light. I'll put the light just over here. Um, it's bright enough to see, but if I have it here, it, I'll just want the camera and uh, you won't see anything whatsoever. When we've done this, what I'll do is I will hook it up to um, a spectrum analyzer on a software defined radio, in fact, this one here, and we'll be able to see, uh, we'll be able to capture what happens when it actually transmits. So we'll be able to see the transmission on the screen and have a look at that as well. Um, so, this device only actually connects to the magnode when the magnode has just been power cycled. Uh, that prevents people like me from walking down the street with one of these and randomly turning all the lights on or off. Uh, so that's a good idea. But what should happen, um, if it all goes to plan, is if I select automatic here, I, I actually, I read the manual just to make sure I don't um, fluff this up. And if I turn automatic on, uh, the devices will, be there, will then listen for the magnode 
So it's now listening for Magnode. If I plug the Magnode in, it will go through an automatic test. So plug it in, the light turns straight on, so it's default on. It's found the Magnode. This is fantastic. Uh, lamp off test. Here we go. Yes, lamp is off. Lamp off test, okay, so it's measure the current in those lamp is off. Lamp on test, any moment now. Yes, lamp is on. And I think what it should do now, it will measure the power that it's got request power. It's now going to request the, the voltage and the current draw, uh, or the power draw in watts of the lamp. And we should see about five watts and about 240 volts. Um, all being well. Any moment now. Now these, sometimes these operations are a bit slow and the reason why it is an instant, I mean if you're at home and you have a remote control for your lights, uh, you, you know you expect to press a button and the lights turn on and you press the button the lights turn off. Uh, that's because whenever you press the button, as soon as you, you press BIP on your remote control, uh, it transmits immediately and the lights receiver receives that and it does what you told it to do. This is very different. This is designed to have maybe thousands of these uh, in lamps down uh, down the street. Not thousands, probably a bit of, a bit too many. Maybe a hundred or so at a time. Uh, oh, there, we receive some power. We've got two thirty eight volt, five point four watt. Perfect. But yes, yeah, so you'd have maybe a hundred of these uh, to one of the little base stations, and if they're all transmitting at once. Uh, or randomly, it's, it'll be a disaster. They'll all clobber each other, they'll all stamp on each other's feet and interfere with each other, and it will never work. So these devices, designed to have lots and lots of little devices on the network at the same time, they have a very low, what's called a, a duty cycle. The duty cycle uh, tells this device here how often and for how long it can transmit. And the duty cycle, actually, for any device in this frequency, is 1%. So that means this device here can only transmit for 600 milliseconds every minute. So it can only transmit less than one second, just over half a second every minute. And it only transmits 25 milliwatts. The reason it takes a little bit of time is because this device doesn't want to transmit all the time. Uh, it's not allowed to, it has to cooperate with maybe hundreds of other devices all around the area. So WiMAC and LoRa and all the related protocols, LeafNet, etc., they're really, really slow. Uh, there's no way this is ever going to do anything like uh, sort of send CCTV images or any live data because the network is just designed for really simple signals like light on, light off, and that's it. Um, so yes, yeah, so now we have a, a power reading, and the power reading is so it's really good because it means that if the light should be on, but you have no power going to it, then it's faulty, and they can send an engineer out to get it fixed. Uh, there are actually a few versions of these uh, these devices here from Harvard Electronics. Or before I touch it and get a zing, I will just turn the power off, because that would be ruinous to my day. Um, there's a few versions. Uh, this is the really basic version, which just turns lights on, off, and gives you a power reading. Uh, there's another version of this, which uh, looks almost identical. It has another socket on, and that extra socket is for what they call in the industry a presence detector. Uh, not Santa Claus presence, uh, but the presence of people. That could be something like the little um, passive infrared movement sensors you get in alarm systems. And the idea of that is that rather than having street lights that are controlled uh, centrally, then they all turn off and they turn on at whatever time you set them up to turn off and turn on again, you can set the lamps with these presence detectors to only turn on when somebody's there. But if you look at the Harvard website, which you can't directly, you have to look on the um, internet archive because they sadly went bust a few years ago, look on the, uh, the archive of their website, the presence detector is a completely separate unit uh, which should mount on the lamppost and point down to where you want to try and sense people's presence and plugs into this device. So the claim that um, 
Mark Steele made that this is a, a scanning urban radar is, is ludicrous and you just need to Google and have a look at, um, I think it's called the iNut uh, or the iNode from Harvard Engineering and it tells you that you need an external device uh, to do that sensing. It's not built into here whatsoever. Uh, the other version of this is a little black box and it's smaller because it hasn't got this main switching circuitry in here because it is designed to control the power supply for an LED light. And they are a bit more interesting because they can not only turn the lights off and on, they can also dim them. So if you combine dimming with presence detection, you have lights that are on but dimmed all the time and then you go on to full brightness when somebody is either walking in the alleyway or the pavement or vehicles are using the road. And Mark actually has some, uh, uh, some videos that, that show that. They show cars going down the road and the lights only go on when the car is down the road. At other times they're turned off. That isn't scanning urban radar. It is this thing called presence detection. It's a separate unit that plugs into one of these devices and I think it's really quite cool. So there we are, that is what the, uh, the device does. We have seen it turn things on and turn things off and measure power. And what I'll do now is I'll get this reconfigured a bit and I will connect it to my um, spectrum analyzer here using this little software defined radio and we'll have a look at what it transmits and what that looks like. Hold there, I'll be right back. We're back and I have the spectrum analyzer here. Um, I thought I'd try it out quickly and it's, it transmits so quickly that it's really hard to see it on the screen here. So what I've done is this um, program here, it is called um, SDR Console, it's really cool. Uh, it plugs into one of these little RTL SDR devices here and it can actually record the signal that it receives from the air. And what I've done is I've recorded the signal that it received off the air and you can see it now on the screen. So you can see that the frequency is right in the middle, it's 869.550 megahertz, 869.5 is about there. Uh, that is about where it should have been um, according to some of the specifications that I've seen. It's, it's not the best signal I've ever seen. There is, a, you look at the left hand side here, there's lots of noise here, there's, there's lots of noise here. Uh, you'd expect the signal to be so, you know, cutting off here quite nicely and cutting off here. But it is produced by a, a fairly cheap, mass-produced, very general purpose RF chip uh, inside the, the device. And actually, you know, if you look at the peak here and the lowest levels here, there, there's quite a margin there, so it's not too bad really, but it just looks messy on my uh, analyzer here. Uh, so that's what it looks like. What I'll do now is I'll get it all plugged in and we'll see it live because you can then see how quick the transmission is. Here we go. Okay, so we're receiving on 869.5 megahertz. All the little peaks here uh, that you can see, that is because I am in a room with cameras and computers and all sorts of things and it's really noisy. Okay, so we're looking for a signal about here in the middle uh, keep your eyes peeled and finger on the pause button because it is lightning fast. Uh, what I'll do is I'll let it go through the whole test procedure again and uh, you'll be able to see the communications that the Magnode is producing. You won't see the comms from this device here because uh, I've actually put the Magnode and the SDR antenna into a little bit of a Faraday cage uh, to try and get some of this nasty noise down. Let's go. There we are, you saw that then? Oh, I didn't have the, um, oh, it's found the magnode. Oh, it's transmitting. There we are, excellent. Initializing, <clears throat> lamp off test. There we are. Lamp on test.
and it's now requesting the power so it's going to get some a reading of the voltage and how many watts the lamp is drawing right now um, what I'll do is I'll make another video uh, in a couple of days time and I say we'll tear down the magnode and reverse engineer the entire thing and see exactly what makes it tick. We'll look at all the chipsets inside, uh, look at how much power they can transmit, uh, look at the capabilities, uh, look at how the, uh, that mains, uh, this main switching power board works. Uh, and then I've had quite a few people ask me uh, in the comments and on Facebook how these software defined radios work uh, and whether you can use them where you are uh, in your home with your PC to get an idea of what kind of signals are around you. And the answer is yes, absolutely you can. Uh, in fact, more than that, you can use this software here, which is freeware, uh, so it's free software. Uh, the, the little dongles, you can get those for about 15 or 20 pounds and you pretty much just plug it in and install the software on the drivers and you have a radio that can receive from one megahertz to 1.8 gigahertz. And you can run the spectrum analyzer, you can look at uh, LTE signals, 5G signals, if they are below 1.8 gigs, you can look at GSM signals. Uh, you can receive walkie talkies and CBs and pages and decode them. And it's really interesting. So I'll do probably a couple of videos about that. One, a quick SDR intro, and then we'll do a bit more of an in-depth dive, maybe, maybe after a few weeks when you've had a chance to buy one yourself and uh, have a look at what kind of things you can do with a, a software defined radio. Uh, that's it, we've seen the magnode, it turns lights on, it turns them off, uh, we've seen it transmit, that's all from me. If you're American, have a great Thanksgiving. Goodbye.